This video is sponsored by MPB. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the holy grail of portrait lenses. That is the Canon RF 85mm f 1.2 L DS USM lens. And I'm gonna start right now. There are very few lenses on the market that are genuinely unique. Some lenses have a super bright 0.95 aperture. Other lenses have an incredibly versatile focal range. But the lens we're reviewing today has got a unique glass element. That is the RF 85mm f1.2 DS. And the DS stands for Defocused Smoothing, a special optical element built into this lens that is designed to create beautiful bokeh like no other lens. But is it worth the hefty price tag? It's in fact 500 pounds more than the standard RF 85mm f1.2, which is already a really expensive lens. So today let's work out if this lens is worth a spot in your photography camera bag. So first up, let's have a look at the overall build quality, lens design, as well as what you get inside the box. So when you first pick this lens up, you'll realize how heavy this lens is. So it's actually a premium plastic and metal constructed lens with quite a complicated optical formula, as well as obviously it being an f1.2 aperture with 13 elements in nine groups. But the thing that surprised me about this lens and versus other lenses that I've used is it's actually weather sealed, which I was quite surprised by, including my older EF 85mm f1.2 that wasn't weather sealed, as well as a lot of my Sigma Art series lenses None of them are weather sealed. So it's nice to see that they've actually included it with this lens. Again, most of the people using this lens are probably going to be shooting in studios, but maybe outside, maybe in more damp conditions. Possibly now you can actually shoot weddings in the rain, for example. You're gonna be able to use this lens, which the other lenses didn't give you that option. So it's nice that they have included that. Now on the side here, you've got two switches. You've got an autofocus to manual focus switch, and then you've got a focus limiter switch. This will allow you to change from focus from full focus all the way down to 1.5 meters to infinity. So if you're in a more challenging lighting environment and the, you're noticing the lens is hunting quite a lot, go ahead and simply flip that switch and hopefully it will speed up the autofocus. And just above that, you've got your main focus ring. And for a size lens of this size, I must say the focus ring is quite small as well as it's electronically coupled to the focus motor. And then just above that, you've also got your control ring like all other RF lenses that allow you to change certain functions that the camera can do. So for example, shutter speed, aperture, ISO. I had actually mine connected to white balance and you can change that setting with inside the camera. It's customizable depending on how you like shooting. So overall, I actually really liked the build quality of this lens. I did wish it was metal, but I understand why it isn't because obviously it would be incredibly heavy. So they have to go for a more premium plastic design because it's a big f1.2 aperture lens. So what do you get inside the box? Well, firstly, you obviously get the lens itself. You get a front and rear lens cap. You also get a lens hood. Now this is not a non-felt lens hood. It's kind of this kind of ribbed plastic material, but it's a decent size, which is great. And the last thing you get is also this fabric pouch. I do wish Canon did those nice kind of Sigma pouches that are like padded uh, with like a zip on the top. But yeah, this one here is just that kind of classic felt material with like a leathery or fake leather bottom to it. To be honest with you, I genuinely think they are useless, so I'll just probably keep that in the box. So overall, I actually really like the lens design. I think the build quality is really good. The only thing I wish could or could have been done better is the focus ring could just be a little bit bigger, but that's just definitely more personal preference. But overall, really liked this lens's build quality. So I'm gonna giving it the full marks, the 10 out of 10. Now, like I was saying at the start of this video, this lens offers you a unique feature and it's called DS or defocused smoothing. What it is, is a special element built into this lens. Think of it like a graduated ND, which is designed to basically really smooth out your background. Now it's mostly noticeable between F1.2 and F2. It becomes less noticeable the higher aperture you go. And it's designed to basically really smooth out your background. So here's a shot on the standard 85 mm f1.2 and then here's a shot on the ds equivalent you can see that the background blur at the same aperture is far smoother on the ds version as well as the bokeh balls are a lot softer there's less cat size in the corners and overall there's a more pleasing image now i recently took this on a photo shoot both with the 85 mm f1.2 and the ds version the one we're reviewing today and both of the lenses are just genuinely amazing for portrait photography 
portraits, weddings, basically anything I think people related and 85 mil is really good. Firstly for its focal range, but obviously because of this lens it has that DS element as well as it being an F 1.2 aperture. This is probably one of the best lenses for portrait and wedding photography out there. But that DS element also has a negative and it's actually to do with its light gathering capabilities. Compared to the F 1.2, this lens can't gather anywhere near as much light because the DS element, the defocused smoothing element, actually is almost like a neutral density filter where it actually limits the amount of light reaching the sensor. So think of this lens like an F 1.2 that can only gather as much light as an F Two. I think there's around 1.25 stops of light less light gathering capabilities than a standard f1.2 aperture lens. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Although this is an f1.2 aperture lens and you're giving, you're getting that depth of field, you're not getting that light gathering capabilities. So your ISO is definitely going to struggle more with this lens than the standard f1.2. But let's have a look at how sharp this lens is by looking at some graph images. So wide open at f1.2, if we go ahead and zoom into the center and the corners, we can see we're getting razor sharpness in the center. And if you have a look over to the corners, you can see that firstly, they're noticeably darker, as well as they're ever so slightly softer. I think there's a slight reduction in contrast as overall sharpness as well. So if we step down to f2, we can see the center sharpens up even further and the corners dramatically brighten up, although I'd still say they're a little bit darker than the center with a little bit more contrast and a little bit more sharpness. So let's step down to f2.8, it's a very similar story, as well as f4. And if we jump all the way to f5.6 and then f8, we can see how sharp this lens truly is in the center and in the corners. Then we go to f11, and then it's narrowest aperture f16, where this lens starts to soften up and you'll really notice diffraction starting to take shape, especially in the center and the corners, although I would still say it's an incredibly sharp lens. So it doesn't matter what aperture you're shooting at, this lens is gonna give you razor sharpness in the center, but I'd step down to f2 to 2.8 to get the best sharpness in the corners. Right, so let's move on to distortion and vignetting. And as you can see, there's basically no distortion to be seen with this lens. That is basically a completely flat profile. But vignetting is a completely different story. There is very strong vignetting in the corners. And if we go ahead and step down to f2, it pushes it to the corners and then f2.8, but it doesn't get any better than that. There's still very dark corners. And I think it's to do with the defocused smoothing element because it's this kind of graduated ND, it basically doesn't remove that vignetting. Now profile corrections are turned off and you'll notice them less if you turn on profile corrections and peripheral illumination. But basically that vignetting does not disappear if you step down to F4, 5.6 or even F8. That vignetting is here to stay. Right, so let's move on to the flaring test. Now this is without a lens hood and you can see there is quite dramatic flaring with this lens. There's very strong flaring in the center and there's quite a dramatic loss in contrast pointing it at bright lights. So if you are planning on using this lens, maybe you're shooting some sunset shots, maybe you're a wedding photographer, highly recommend using the lens hood. Otherwise you're gonna have a dramatic loss in contrast and very strong flaring with this lens. And lastly, let's have a look at its overall macro ability and no way is this a macro lens with just a minimum focus distance of just 85 centimeters and couple that with the 85 mil focal length you're only getting maximum reproduction ratio of 0.12 which is actually quite poor although the image quality close up image quality i think is really good wide open at f1.2 you're just never going to be able to get that close to your subject so although you're getting great image quality you're not getting great macro ability so overall, the image quality of this lens is a very unique experience. You either love it or you hate it. The defocus smoothing element, I just think adds another level of beauty to your images. A standard 85 mil I love, especially an F1.2, but with this defocus smoothing element, it's almost like you're adding in a post-production look without having to create a post-production workflow you're creating almost a Gaussian blur effect in your background without having to go onto Photoshop, separate your foreground and background, and then add a Gaussian blur. It's like adding a lens blur effect, but in camera, in the actual lens itself. But obviously it's more of a personal preference. You either like it or you're not a fan of it. And personally, I think it's one of my favorite lenses that I've ever shot on. And the image quality is absolutely amazing. So because of that, I'm gonna do something I've only ever done once before. I'm gonna give this lens an 11 out of 10. 
Now an 85mm prime lens gives you many benefits, but the biggest disadvantage I can think of is genuinely the overall size and weight. This lens is massive and it will take up a huge amount of room in your camera bag. And if you're a wedding photographer thinking of carrying this lens around with you on your back all day, you're gonna need a nice comfortable dual camera harness to actually carry this lens because it's gonna weigh you down on a photo shoot. But let's have a look at a few other lenses on the market to maybe see there might be a better lens for you, especially if you're maybe more of a destination wedding photographer or simply a travel photographer. So let's have a look at this lens here. Firstly, the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 DS. That lens comes in a whopping 1.2 kilograms. And if you're wondering, maybe I'll just get the non-DS version and save some size and weight. They're basically the same. The non-DS version comes in at 1,195 grams. So there's only about five grams in it. And basically they are the same lens. Next, we can have a look at, it's the Canon RF 85mm F2 Macro, a lens I very recently reviewed. And that only comes in at 500 grams, so around 700 grams less than this lens here. Then we can compare it to the Canon EF 85mm f1.4 LIS, actually the lens I use um, personally, and that comes in at just 950 grams. And the last lens we can compare it to is actually the predecessor to this lens, and that is the, the Canon EF 85mm f1.2 L Mark II, and that comes in at 1,025 grams. So if you own that lens, this lens is even bigger and even heavier. And if we have a look at the size chart here, you can see this is the biggest and heaviest lens on our list today. So if you're after a small lightweight lens you can just chuck in your bag, this isn't the lens for you. But if you're someone that just sits on a table and you occasionally use it on a portrait shoot, then this lens is probably going to be ideal. As a wedding photographer, just bear in mind that this could weigh you down on a wedding day. I know the next time I try this at a wedding, I think I'm probably gonna try and get a nice comfortable, maybe not just use it for the entire day, I'm not too sure. But yeah, this lens is really big and really heavy, so just bear that in mind. So I'm only gonna be giving it a four out of 10. Now, as I mentioned in my previous 85mm f1.2 video, I had to sell my older version simply because of how slow the autofocus was. The EF 85mm f1.2 at f1.2 was basically unusable. The autofocus was so slow, it just couldn't keep up with the pace of just a standard wedding. So I was pleasantly surprised when I tested the non-DS version that the autofocus was really good and you could easily use it at f1.2. And this lens was basically the exact same. In fact, I struggled to notice the difference between the two. Now, with my autofocus tests, I could definitely see that the non-DS version was maybe about 5% faster in autofocus, but in a real world environment, that is something you're never going to notice. So yes, technically, the DS version is a little bit slower when it comes to its overall autofocus, but it's not something you're ever really going to notice, especially if you've even, I had to actually have them side by side to go, oh yeah, I had to go by frame by frame to actually notice the difference. So if you buy the non-DS or the DS version, both of these lenses have got really reliable autofocus, as well as neither of these lenses have image stabilization. So overall, I really like the autofocus. It's not the fastest autofocus, but it's reliable at f1.2. So because of that, I'm giving it a solid nine out of 10. And last but not least is price. And as you can imagine, this lens really does outshine the others just due to how expensive this lens is. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at this lens here, as well as the non-DS version, a few other Canon lenses on the market to work out which one is the right one for your camera bag. So let's have a look at this lens here first. Brand new, it comes in at a whopping 3,499 pounds, but used, if you can find this lens used, because it is quite difficult, there's not that many out there on the market, that comes in at around 2,300 to 2,500 pounds. Now, if you want this lens, but you don't want the defocused smoothing element, you can get that for around 2,999 pounds brand new, but secondhand, and they're a lot more readily available, easier to find, you'll be able to find one for around 1,700 to 1,900 pounds secondhand in reasonable condition. Now, both these lenses are very expensive, but there are plenty of other more reasonably priced lenses on the market. Like for example, the Canon RF 85mm F2 Macro. That lens there only comes in at 569 pounds and used, you should be able to find one for 400 to 500 pounds in reasonable condition. And the other two lenses we can look at today is actually the lens I'm using right now. It's the Canon EF 85mm F1.4 LIS. That comes in brand new at 1,719 pounds, 
but second hand, you'll be able to get it for around 800 to 1,000 pounds in reasonable condition, just thanks to it being naturally a little bit cheaper. And the last lens, which is the least recommended lens from myself, is the Canon EF 85mm f1.2 L Mark II. Wow. That lens, you can't actually buy brand new anymore. It was discontinued about three years ago, but you obviously can buy it secondhand. And there's actually loads on the market, which is why I don't recommend it. And that comes in for around 400 to 700 pounds, again, depending in condition. But I ended up selling that lens just because of how slow the autofocus was. And that lens, I personally don't recommend. So you can see, although this is by far the most expensive lens, it's the only lens that gives you that defocused smoothing element. And if that's something you want, and annoyingly, that's something you're going to have to pay for. So personally, this lens here, as well as the non-DS version, I only recommend to professionals that earn significant money from their photos. So because of that, the, the DS version, I'm only giving a three out of 10 for price. So as you can see, this lens is incredibly specialized, especially with that defocused smoothing element. So let's have a look at a few pros and cons to really work out is this lens here deserving for a spot in your camera bag? Let's have a look at the pros first. So first up, you're getting great build quality with the big added bonus of weather sealing. So if you are a wedding photographer, this isn't just a portrait photographer lens anymore. You can take this outside in more extreme environments thanks to that weather sealing. You're getting amazing image quality with this lens with corner to corner sharpness. And couple that with the amazing f1.2 aperture, this lens is truly unique. You've also got that unique defocused smoothing element, which no other lens offers you. So if you like that look, this lens here is the only one for you. You've also got usable autofocus at f1.2. So if you love shooting wide open, then this lens autofocus is going to keep up the pace for most situations. So as you can see, a decent amount of pros. So let's have a look at the cons and why maybe another lens might be worth a spot in your camera bag instead. First up, big and heavy. Both the DS and non-DS versions, huge lenses, and you're gonna need a big camera bag to carry this around with you. You've also got that loss of light due to the defocused smoothing element. So if you're someone that loves shooting in low light and only shoots in low light, the non-DS version of this lens might be better off. So do bear in mind, you lose around a stop of light because of that defocused smoothing element. And of course, it's like three and a half thousand pounds brand new, and it's actually difficult to find secondhand. So if you do wanna buy secondhand, you might have to be waiting, you know, three, four months before one becomes available. But brand new price, horrendously expensive. And I only recommend it to the top professional photographers that earn serious money from their photos. So what did I think of this lens and do I recommend it to photographers? Well, yes and no. And I think it really comes down to what you're after from a lens. If you're after the best image quality with a unique depth of field with bokeh that you only can really replicate in post, then this lens is perfect for you. If you're someone that really focuses on the small details and you're after a lens that gives you that unique look that no other lens can offer you, then again, this lens is going to be perfect. But if you're more of a, just a standard wedding photographer and you're, you're not after a specialized lens, you're just after a nice 85 mil, to be honest with you, I do think there are lots of other options out there. It is lovely to have, but most people are never really going to notice that defocused smoothing element. I'm sure you will, but most other people probably won't. Not even other photographers. I was lucky, funny enough actually, that I had the non-DS and DS smoothing version at the same time. And I actually shot one on one camera and one on the other. And I, when I brought them both into Lightroom, and because obviously I took, taking photos at the same time, and they, I mixed them up via time and date, I couldn't work out which photos were taken on which. And as there's a 500 pound difference between these two lenses, that's not a very good thing. Now they were very noticeable on some photos. Take this photo here, for example, it's fairly obvious which one was the non-DS and DS version. But most of the photos, I'd say around 80% of the photos, I did struggle to determine the difference between which one was which. And basically these lenses are pretty much identical apart from that defocused smoothing element. So if you're really after that element, then this lens is perfect. But I think for everybody else, because of that loss of light that you get with this lens around about 1.2 stops, I actually think this lens is probably better off for the majority of photographers. So if you are debating between the two, I'd probably say the non-DS version is probably going to be better off. But if you're just after a nice standard 85 mil, I'd probably recommend maybe the EF 
85mm f1.4 or even Sigma's EF 85mm art lens. I really, really liked that lens and I'll make sure to leave my link to the uh, review I did of that lens down below. But yeah, I loved the DS version, but I don't think, not even I can justify it and I had both at the same time. And with an overall score of 37 out of 50, this is a recommended lens. But my question is, would you buy it? Do you love the DS version or the non-DS version? Make sure to write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.